This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me, as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. G'day, everyone. How you going? Uh, I'm going good. You're going good. Fantastic. Going good. Well, look, folks, uh, we're going to just get cut right through the chase, and that is we have a very special guest, somebody who we have not had on in six months. Wow. Oh, no. That's been a little ways. Uh, Mel Kirk, everybody, uh, COO of Zen Studios. Hey, guys. Uh, good to be with you again. I cannot believe it's been six months. Uh, maybe that just goes to show how stinking busy we've been over here. So. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it, and, and, and you've, you've kind of got that, uh, you know, the pinball show to put out information rather than uh, having us be like, Mel, can we get you on? So that works to your favor, too. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We we started with the pinball show really because uh, obviously you know we got a lot to talk about right now, and um, we just needed a new way to do that and stay organized. And uh, so hope, hope you guys are enjoying it. Yeah, we are. We kind of view it mm-hmm. as it's a uh, press conference, and then we have follow up questions that we want, but you know it's hard to ask them. So <laughs> Hence why you're here <laughs> today. Hey, exactly. <laughs> The question, answer the questions to the questions. There That's you right. go. Um, so, folks, this is going to be a, a, a nice deep dive of all the questions that uh, you may have heard us bring up, uh, questions that we've seen uh, brought up uh, in discussions and stuff like that. Um, but I wanted to start off kind of with this, that in the show you said that you were obviously bringing Zen's physics with you to Pinball Effects using the unreal engine and i was just kind of curious to know how is is that a kind of a plug and play kind of situation how does that integrate with the with going to an entirely new graphics engine does that cause complications it is most definitely not plug and play it is most definitely complicated (laughs) um ue has its own form of physics you know and uh so we ripped it out we're putting our own in and i i can't say much more than that because it's you know there's some confidentiality there but um, I will say, like, our physics are the most advanced, right? And uh, we, we need to keep our physics, and it's very, you know, I don't know. It, it, they're, they're very special. So when we're talking about changing in an engine, it's it's definitely heavy heavy lifting. I mean, we're talking about, like, gravity and collision control and friction and rigid body dynamics, like, all these different things that go into our physics simulation. It just has to be customized, and it's heavy lifting. Okay, so mm-hmm. it's basically if you're rip- customizing a car, you're ripping out the suspension uh, that was came with it and putting in your own, like you, uh, uh, the way you liked it. Yeah, that's pretty full on stuff, and I imagine there's probably other things that um, are a bit different between like Unreal and the old PX engine as well. I know that one of the 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 community seems to be really excited about the concept of HDR, um, a high dynamic range in um, games, and I'm just wondering. Um, how that fits into pinball effects um, uh, as far as like graphical presentation goes. I'd say even things like ray tracing too. I mean, if that can be Mm. spoken upon. Yeah, we haven't specifically said ray tracing yet. Maybe we did. I don't know. These are things that we're working on and Mm. we want, you know, that's the power that Unreal Engine gives us. And we looked at the change from PX to Unreal, um, obviously, to you know, kind of reiterate, look, we don't have to maintain an engine anymore. We let Unreal do that. That's what they do, and we can make games. But the physics were very specific to us. We have to bring that with us. And then the updated graphical horsepower, that is something that is provided to us, and we don't necessarily have to, to do anything other than, like, we need to work on a lot of the assets, all the games that are getting remastered. Like, it's complete re rework of, of assets. But then they end up looking beautiful. The HDR, the, the graphical fidelity ray tracing, you know, the way a, the, the ball can potentially look and the way that we can do lighting and the dynamics. I think that the night and day difference um, of the uh, World West Rampage uh, screenshot for the, the night mode, I mean, like, come on, that looks awesome. Uh, I mean, or maybe I'm just saying it. I hope you all like <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, these are the things in, you know, we're still like every table is going to get its own kind of upgrade. It's not just like that's how night mode or dark mode will look in any other game that has dark colors associated with it. It's, it really gives us freedom on, on the graphical side. I mean, because I'm kind of guessing that one of the pluses with uh, going and using a, a third party's graphics engine is that when tech moves forward, they're obviously going to be keeping up with it. Like, uh, again, just thinking about with HDR, ray tracing, uh, you know, doing 4K uh, gaming and stuff like that, that 
kind of takes it off your plate and puts it all on theirs, right? Absolutely. 4K HDR, that's like the minimum spec that we can ship with, which will be awesome. And then from there, you know, it's up to how much work and energy we put into it. Ray tracing just doesn't happen at the push of a button either. I mean, that's all custom work. Right. Um, and then, you know, the, who knows what the future holds? Like people already have 8K sets, but there's no 8K content. But, you know, we know that the current devices are capable of pushing that. So uh, eventually and in time, I mean, we'll, we'll see what we get to. So I'm kind of curious with... Uh... Obviously, if you're not having employees focusing on the engine now, that frees up employees. But then I know that also in the comments, uh, there was mentioned by, I can't remember if it was you or Akosh, that basically said that you guys have also been hiring more people for the pinball division. I'm wondering if you can kind of expand upon that. Kind of what does that benefit? Uh, I mean, we kind of suspect what the benefits are, but maybe you can uh, detail what the benefits of that would be for Zen. Yeah. We're getting so many CVs in right now from people who want to come work at Zen. I'm personally flattered. I think that that kind of says a lot about your company when people are, you know, aching to, to come work with you. Mm -hmm. uh, we're hiring specifically right now for pinball. Um, and our goal is to 2X our pinball output <laughs> uh, within the next 12 months. So uh, that means we're going to try to get to 20 tables per year um, as a baseline. Oh, wow. Uh, of course, we have wow. platform development and we have table development. Okay. So. And when I say tables, that doesn't just mean like the Williams where we're, those are kind of like, uh, you know, ports or we're already working with existing. I mean, I'm talking about from the ground, from scratch, 20 games per year um, is our goal for content. On the platform side, we really don't like to have to keep building platforms. <laughs> like it's, it's a pain. Uh, I don't want to release a new pinball FX every three years um, because what we have to do with business, what we have to do with content and then push it all through on a brand new platform. I mean, it is a headache. So I really... Mm. So the guys that we're bringing in right now, yes, of course, we're, um, you know, we get them started in content. That's where they're going to start with tables. And then we take our more senior guys and we put them into uh, into the platform team. But what the hiring means is that platforms should be bigger, more robust, better maintained. Live services should be more compelling. And then the content can flow and we can crank out awesome tables to fill the, the platform with. And uh, so that's, you know, that's what the hiring means. And I think so far this year, we've, we brought on 20 people and um, you know, this is a result of that embracer thing. Everyone's like, Oh, it means that Zen's not going to make pinball anymore. Well, quite the opposite. I can assure you we're, <laughs> we're making uh, more pinball than we've ever made before. Um, the, you mentioned the, the comparison shot uh, with wild rest rampage. Um, and there it was listed as unreal Four, And I know that, I don't know. I'm sure you were blown away by it too, but we'd watched the unreal demo for Unreal 5 um, and what it meant for lighting, what it meant for textures and everything like that. And I'm just curious, are you guys developing for sure in Unreal 4? And if you were to want to switch to Unreal 5, is that something that would be then relatively painless since you were already in the ecosystem then? Yeah, look, we're developing in 4.25. It's the same thing that Fortnite is you know, built in and, and currently maintained. Uh, 5 is coming out later this year. Um, of course, we can move to five at any at any time, but under the guidance of Epic and under you know what's available to us right now, yeah, everything is in four point two five. That's cool. Well, I've got some questions now about probably uh, an area that Zen has dabbled in in the past, but seems to be getting a lot more focused now. And that's VR. Oh yeah. So turning this over to Jared. Uh, <laughs> so you know, I've been I've got the Quest two now, and it's a pretty amazing piece of hardware. And I'm just wondering, with Star Wars Pinball VR and that direction that Zen's going in, what role does VR play in sort of Pinball FX's strategy overall? Uh, in Pinball FX's strategy, I can't say right now at this certain moment because we, we, have a, we have sort of a business problem with VR, which prevents us from putting VR directly into FX because uh, for our licenses anyway, VR is a separate category. We have to address it separately, and it has to most of the time be its own product. The Wait, industry so is evolving. Yeah, let me let me just yeah. stop you there, just so I can clarify here. So it's it's if you're licensing for a pinball video game, they categorize though VR as a completely separate category itself. Most licensors do. Is oh, what okay. you're seeing with, right. with with Lucasfilm and Star Wars right now, right? Okay. Um, we're building a standalone experience because VR is you know they don't want. There's, there's a notion of like, you know, brand equity and just releasing things that are just kind of add-ons when you can really make a full experience for something and give it a proper treatment. So 
you know, in the, in, when we're trying to figure out how do we ingest content into FX and can we do VR, Zen can release our own games with the, with the VR treatment with NFX, sure. But licensing is, is, is much different than that. They, uh, there's just, it, while it might be under the same games group, it's a different product category to them. I'd imagine it's sort of like, you know, if we, if we take what Zachariah Pinball have done um, with um, Magic Pixel, they've just added in a VR layer into the product. Mm -hmm. and Which is something it's a lot well, of people well have been bringing I like up. It. Yeah. It's good. That's right. It's it's a, you know, they just switch it on and it's there. Now, I'd imagine that, you know, Zen could have done it the same way, had, you know, the, you know, the room style, a basic room set up for each of the Star Wars tables. But then you have something like the Star Wars Pinball VR experience where it's super immersive and you just can't do that in the same ecosystem as uh, FX. Uh, FX3 at the moment, but pinball effects in the future because it's like you've got to think about you know all the different um, you know, collectibles and stuff that you can put into the room and what are they going to look like and how is the interaction going to work. So I can kind of see where you're going with that. It is very different from a, a like planning perspective and an implementation perspective. Um, you can have like a basic experience or really really rich experience and it sounds like you're going down the path of individual tailored rich experiences in vr yeah you're you're right uh, you you i need to adopt your messaging jared because <laughs> <laughs> there you, you can have that now. very well you know but in the, in the raw you know you said it very eloquently but just the way that i look at it and the way that zen has to view it is you know look look at a push of a button you say what we do with the williams tables you can go from the uh d the original creation to the remaster version right so course at a push of a button we could toggle to a vr experience so to speak it's just you know we're bound by different rules the zachary guys again they have a great implementation um you know we we, we you can't do that if you're going to have brands like star wars and you know others so yeah this I think that probably was leading into another question um, as well, which it seems like based on that answer, if there were going to be more VR experiences, they will be separate apps on on VR because of that because of that requirement from licensors. They they need that that individual experience tailored to their brand and their requirements. Correct. And uh, mm. once they saw what we did with FX2 VR, you know, because that was our that was our proof of concept, right? We mm. we had to do some of our own tables first. We showed them how the, this could work. Um, actually, Universal allowed us to apply, you know, the Universal Classics into FX, and, and same with Telltale with Walking Dead. Um, mm. And then we, when we wanted to get more aggressive and go for, you know, something bigger, meteor Star Wars, it's like, oh, let's let's do something that's never been done. So what you've got is a Star Wars experience that happens to be a pinball game. In VR, I mean, like, it is cool. Yeah. And so there's all this extra stuff. And, like, that just shows, the like, what M VR was built for. It's it's a totally different platform. It's a different experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's it's definitely an exciting direction because, you know, experiencing the Star Wars Pinball package or the experience in VR is, well, <laughs> it's pretty special. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, leading on from that, though, um, with the pin of X framework uh, are the VR apps, even though they're separate tailored branded experiences, are they still going to share the same sort of underlying framework that pinball effects offers? You know, things like maybe leaderboards or, you know, the competitive access uh, aspects like pinball Royale or tournaments, is that sort of going to be baked into these experiences or will it sort of be more separated? Well, uh, it's a progression like anything. So we're looking at VR platforms again, right? And you know how I just told you I don't like building platforms, but mm. <laughs> each of, a separate Star Wars P, uh, you know, VR game is now a Star Wars VR platform. And then inside of there, we have eight tables shipping, right? And there's a bunch of other tables that we still have in the library. Uh, we do have leaderboards um, and you know, the, a feature set can grow. Um, we have certain targets we want to hit because look, May 4th is coming. So it would make sense that we try mm -hmm. to get something out mm -hmm. for the hype. So there's just so many different things that come and this is what we could get done. I think that the feature set is rich right now for VR. Could it be better? Yes. Is pinball Royale going to come to VR but right now? I have no idea. We're going <laughs> to make sure it works first in standard screens. <laughs> um, yeah. but some, you know, of course, yeah, there's like, there's all sorts of cool things we could build into the platform and the services we could do. We can expand. That's really good. Now, we were talking before about FX2 VR. Now, 
the I know that Zen did a, a promotion on Oculus recently for that um, particular um, product, and it was actually on on sale, which is really good. Um, now the the thing about it's still a good package to download, particularly if you're gearing up for Epic um, uh, Star Wars Pinball, because it gives you a taste of what to expect. But at the same time, uh, it's a very different experience. Now, it, with FX Two VR, there are some underlying minor bugs in that package. It's pretty much only one, which is like a a menu overlay problem in there. Mm-hmm. It, are there plans to just patch that and and then call it done with FX Two VR? Yeah, and you know the game works beautifully on Quest One, and, and then if you play it on uh, Quest Two, you encounter this bug. So it is a okay. device specific bug. Uh, we are aware of it. Um, it. It, we, you know, it unfortunately kind of intersected when we were in the middle of Star Wars Pinball VR. Mm. Um, and this is one of the things, you know, like we don't, we haven't had the bandwidth to, to do maintenance and to do fixes when new devices ship. So that'll be a beauty of having more guys on board. <laughs> we'll be able to tackle yeah, these right. problems quicker because it does suck to see our game rating kind of suffering now. Uh, you know, like that bug is there. It's prevalent. Um, yeah. And we, we've gotten flack. But yeah, we need to fix that. It's it's on a list. It's on our list. Long list of red items, long. you know, all the red <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, a long list. You sort of like roll it out, and it just goes down the hall. I don't I'm imagine. aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we did roll out some patches recently. I don't know if you guys caught those, but we we did issue some some fixes on Steam and uh, I think on Nintendo Switch recently and some others. So yeah, we did see those come through actually, which was yeah. good. They seem to be well received. Um, the other question I had about. Um, I guess FX2 is those tables that are in FX2 now, they've already got a VR um, environment set for them. I just wonder with PinFX, is there a chance that we're going to see almost a reboot of FX2 VR and start to see some of these original Zen IPs coming into a package, um, a VR package um, in the future? Good question. Um, it's going to be a technology update again. And sorry, I'm getting washed out, everybody. The sun is moving yeah. in Northern California. It's up later, and I'm getting whited out more than white than I am. So, <laughs> <laughs> he's a ghost, um, folks. <laughs> yeah, I'm ghosting on you. Um, no, you know, we'd have to like if we were going to re-release those, it'd be the same thing: a rebuild in new technology, a remaster, a re-release. Uh, I'll just say that I think our you know, our VR roadmap in our minds is more about um, so what, what some of our cool licenses and our future licenses are going to uh, enable us to do. Mm. Um, we, you know, it, it's always a balance. Like, I know everyone loves our Zen Originals, um, and there's new ones, by the way, in production, which you guys know about for longer than... Two years. We, uh, two years we've known about them. I was so, screaming that in the show. I was like, we've known for two years! <laughs> I saw yeah, I saw that. I, I watched that, because uh, thank you guys for that episode, by the way. That you, I think you, you were very fair to us. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, uh, did I answer the question? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think so. I think the the summary of that is yes, but it requires basically a brand new re-engineering of those tables. Anyhow, it's not just a flick the switch sort of thing. It's like a yeah. concerted, targeted effort, and it sounds like that effort is better spent on some of the new um, licenses coming out yeah. um, over the course of this and next year. Am um, I guessing correctly that enough. Star Wars VR is being done in Unreal? Also, it is okay. Yes, because we knew that we knew that with the quest two that it basically was on your unreal unity or your own engine that would function. So we mm-hmm. were like, okay, it's probably going to be one of those two when we were still guessing what engine you might be switching to. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair enough. Now I've got one more question uh, on the VR space and um, you'll probably laugh at this one. Now okay. you'll see behind Chris, he's got, no, a, I don't have an image in this room right now. All right. Well, it, he, it, he, he has in right the past. There. He has a thing called a pin sim controller. And, you know, it basically allows you to sort of have that feeling of standing in front of, of a machine when you're in VR. So I'm just wondering, can we expect to see, can I, can I buy this year, <laughs> perhaps, something from Arcade One Up that does the same thing as that pin sim controller? It gives you that feeling in VR of standing in front of a machine. So it like completes the experience for Star Wars Pinball VR. <laughs> it's, it's a great product that should come to market and yeah. 
<laughs> we have we have several prototypes uh, in our own office, which uh, actually back in the day, Jeremy Williams, uh, who was doing some cool videos for Oculus back in the day, who I think maybe built the first one. Well, that's who I bought the, the chip from. He yeah. did. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've had our eye on that. And now that we have big VR games, you know, and look, Star Wars Pinball VR is trying to be one of the top VR titles of the year. So mm. we'll see what kind of adoption we get. And if we feel like there's an install base, you know, we can pull some triggers very quickly to uh, sell additional hardware that completes the experience. Because I will personally yeah. say that the ability to anchor yourself with something in front of you, I was able to, in the VR experience, let go, turn around, take a step to the side, look where in the VR where the table should be, step and put my hands immediately where they should go. It was mm -hmm. just like a perfect fit, and I was like, "Oh my god, that's that's the bomb that <laughs> that sells it so well." <laughs> it is really cool. Uh, I wasn't so graceful the first time I tried that, Chris. I might have tripped and fallen over. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a thing, you know, loss, right? And you're just like, you know, yeah. I'm out. Well, where I ran into the issue was I was trying to. Uh, me and Jer Jared were trying to see if we could like see under the table and how far along the side of the table could we get. And I oh. didn't realize where the wall that was in front of me was in relation to that. <laughs> and I wound up <laughs> smacking into the wall <laughs> going up. Oh, okay. I got to, uh, I got to adjust like a little that. bit. Yeah. Well, you know, I did really like that. About VR though, right? I mean, like, you, the, the, the game is in front of you. You can see it from all angles underneath it, the side, you want to get really close up into the play field. Like, I mean, you can, well, and honestly, that was one of the things that we were impressed with was with what Zen had done was that it is viewable from all angles. Like, yeah. you can look down to where the ball drains, and it's finished inside there. It's not just, you know, a mere reflection of what should be. No, it's there's like parts. It, it, yeah. it, it's it's there. Yeah. And even, even with us looking on the underside of the table, it was like, nope, they put a bottom on there to the point that I think on Mars, one of the spiders is even crawling under there. Yeah, at, it at is. At some point. Yeah. So. It's actually a, 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 a texture that, you know, things can interact with, which, yeah. you know, it's it's like you've got to do that in VR, I'd imagine, which probably adds to the <laughs> Because cost people like me are going to be dorky it. enough to try it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll put it, a perfect example of this was I was playing, um, oh, God, now I can't even remember what game it was that I was doing. Oh, it was a, a, on Last of Us Part Two, And my character, it's raining. There's a rain gutter. There's a whole wash of rain falling down. And I had her walk directly under it. And sure enough, there was animation of her doing her hair underneath it. And br and I was like, they knew that some idiot like me was going to be like, hey, I wonder what happens. Do they interact with the water? And yeah, they do. <laughs> yeah. No, it's pretty cool. I'd imagine that sort of stuff, though, Mel, you know, adds to the complexity of producing a, a VR package. Because you've got to think of... All the different interaction scenarios that someone might do when they're actually interacting with the game yes you yeah. and then when you're in qa and you find all the things you missed and you realize oh we got another <laughs> month to work on this thing <laughs> <laughs> yep didn't think of that or that or that yeah happens all the yeah time. users it'd be game development would be easier if it wasn't for all those pesky users <laughs> <laughs> if they would only things. do exactly what you wanted them to <laughs> exactly um, I'm going to shift well, over to... Uh, oh, you, yeah, that was all the VR, right? Yeah, that's that's. I'm done with the VR. Thank okay. you. They were good answers. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to shift over to mobile, and I know that you guys have a lot that you're going to save to announce regarding mobile for later in the year, um, but that doesn't mean we don't have questions. <laughs> <laughs> Curious to know. One of those main questions is, because we started thinking about it, we know how you guys have kind of used mobile as a test bed for a lot of things, um, mm -hmm. whether it be, uh, you know, presentation, uh, purchasing models, stuff like that. And it got us thinking with regards to Williams Pinball, what engine that was using. And we were thinking, well, if it was Unreal, it probably would have had the little logo on the front. But then we we're like, is it PX or is it Unity? Can you tell us what engine Williams Pinball is actually running on? Yeah, it's running in, in PX engine. It is so PX engine. Okay. It is, yeah. All right. Okay. And so therefore, that's the... That's the same engine that would be running on the arcade one up stuff because that's the Android versions basically. Correct. Um, you know, okay, just to kind of recap, the first UE game from Zen on the pinball side will be Star Wars Pinball VR. And after that, like okay. anything new is going to be on Unreal. And before that was all PX. Okay. Okay. 
That's okay. a good line in the sand. Yes. Right. <laughs> so it makes me wonder, like, as Chris was saying, there seems to be a lot of experimentation. Mobile is a very different market to consoles and PC. Yeah. So I wonder with mobile, uh, is that going to end up being sort of taken or taken into or subsumed into the PinFX ecosystem? Or is, is that sort of going to be a little bit like VR and remain its own standalone package with its own technology and, and all that sort of stuff? Because you did say when back when FX3 came out that you were hoping that the mobile was going to be a unified package that would be FX3, and obviously that never happened. Right. We never got there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we we do have mobile is is coming back into view in a in a very um, big way for us. A, a very it'll be very supported again um, under the new Embracer and Saber operative. We're being given resources, access to um, knowledge and expertise, and just extra help to uh, maintain a, a good mobile presence. Um, I still want to do mobile the way that I like to play a game. Um, you know, I know Williams, we, we kind of brought in all these like parts and, and kind of free to play sort of stuff, but that's not my favorite thing to do. I don't think anybody here really enjoys making a game that operates like that. So mm. we're, we're again, kind of going back to the drawing board um, and with mobile, but we're going to, we're going to make another attempt at mobile on, on pinball or mobile on pinball. Wow. That was my, my <laughs> <30 a>. <laughs> <laughs> I told you guys earlier, I was up early today. <laughs> yeah. We're going to try our, our hand at pinball on mobile um, again in a, in a, in a new format and hopefully it'll be enjoyable. It'll be very easy to, to digest It'll be easy to understand what it is you need to do, um, and that that is you know a big priority as we go forward. Does that mean though that like the Williams Pinball app has that seen its last edition? No, I no, I don't think it's seen its last edition. It, it would still well, actually, you know, because that's in the PX engine. That's so in the have, PX, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. <laughs> we haven't thought of everything yet. Um, what you're going to see, I think, is there'll be new releases. I think maybe the Williams Pinball app probably won't see any new content because we're not creating any new Williams tables in PX. Okay. So right. yeah, just by virtue of, you know, we can talk about, we can say that here. I mean, by virtue of our choice and technology going forward, it appears that Williams Pinball Mobile is kind of maybe seen its last content. Well, for you those know? of you that, mm -hmm. uh, uh, like me, that actually enjoyed the grind uh, because you didn't want to pay and you wanted the free, now you know you've got all the time mm. in the world to to get for free the rest of those tables. Everybody's going to hate sure. me for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm like the only person that was like, well, at the grind, it wasn't bad. I mean, I did an entire month's worth of charting to figure out exactly how long it would take. This is during the pandemic and when I was really, really bored. Um, <laughs> to try and figure out how long it truly would take for you to earn all the tables and all the parts and everything. And um, I mean, it's doable, but... Yeah, it's a so Chris, you might be like the only person who talked about liking the grind. A lot of people grind it, or go through the grind. Uh, I'm I'm surprised. Mm. Um, that's kind of the nature of, of mobile gaming. Um, and, and that's, that's it exactly. Because mm. if I wanted, if I wanted a full game of pinball, I hopped on my PC and I played it the way that I wanted to play it. But when it came to mobile, I treated it much like I treat other mobile games, which means I'm going for a really short burst. I typically didn't play a three ball game. I was only playing the daily challenges. Um, and because of the grind made the daily challenges have a true purpose. That was what I was doing. Once I earned all the tables, I was like, Oh, well, okay. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I got something out of the grind, but I certainly know why people hate the grind. Um, Cause there's mm. plenty of other games that I've dropped because of the grind. So yeah. there's a, there's definitely a fine balancing act with, with, you know, working out what people want versus you know what they're willing to put up with from a grinder perspective yeah just changing changing pace here a bit we know that um you know mobile is a different beast and it sounds like there are some changes afoot with mobile but just wondering if if vr has a strategy where all the brand owners want their own experience would that sort of carry through to mobile as well like um would there be sort of a standalone app um, for pin effects, or are we going to see more brand specific implementations um, of the, um, the the product? Well, I think you've seen historically uh, on mobile, we have released separate games 
for um, discoverability purposes, right? Um, mm. So people can find, we can leverage our IP, uh, Aliens vs. Pinball, Bethesda, what else? Williams, obviously, um, Star Wars, Marvel. Uh, we even did all the Family Guy and American Dad and like all those, the Balls of Glory, they each had their own app in South Park. Because discoverability works so differently on mobile, you know, those games also existed in, in Zen Pinball. Um, what was missing was the entitlement. You know, we I think that we wanted to make sure if people bought the app here, then they could get the entitlement. I think somewhere along the way we we connected them. Maybe we didn't, I don't know. But the strategy going forward, mobile hasn't changed in that regard. Discoverability is still a problem. Um, but you know, we I don't know. I don't know what the answer is yet, but you know, we're established. I mean, like there's gonna be a dedicated group of people who know how to do mobile. And mm. Under my purview, I, I will I can help provide, make sure they have everything that they need to make a great mobile game. Uh, it'll be within the expectations of the quality that we always want. Will it be brand specific? I don't know yet. Will it be a Pinball FX platform style game? I think it makes a lot of sense um, to do it that way, as long as we can also entitle players to own the content if they discover it in a Star Wars standalone game, that then they can come into FX if they want to play it there as well at the same time. I think that's... I think on mobile that that is a for us anyway that's a good solution so again mm. this comes into the idea of a you're hiring more people <laughs> to be able to tackle some of this and by nature of being part of this larger group of with the embracer and saber that some of those other companies that they are in this group might have a better grasp of uh mm. putting mobile forth that you guys could then just be like hey yes we like that thank you and it becomes part of your uh kit also good summary are you a, uh, just out of curiosity any of those companies uh borrowing kit from you guys well <laughs> <laughs> oops <laughs> that's that a, good, that was it's a... a good question um embracer you know family companies have some amazing ip that could benefit from good cross promotion coming to the zen library you know and discover a different player base or break down the fourth wall put a Zen pinball game into a, you know, beautifully placed corner or arcade of an Embracer R RPG or whatever other game it might be coming out with, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, these are all cool, really fun things that we're going to be able to realize uh, in the future. What to, mm -hmm. uh, so with all this, all the variations of mobile that you've sampled with and everything, um, has there been anything that surprised you with all the discovery that uh, you're like, yes, that's awesome. We didn't expect that that's going forward. Oh, from the mobile game? Yeah, to... from mobile gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> um, user interface, you know, that, that was a big one. UX, as we call it. Uh, mm -hmm. Really, really big. Under Getting better player data and understanding what people want to spend their time on. We don't get that kind of data um, so much on consoles. We get some of it on PC. But just the richness of data that we can harvest um, from mobile. And it's not meaning like we're selling this. Right. <laughs> like, not, yeah, let's not... clear that up right now because people are going to yeah. jump on that. <laughs> yeah. No, what I mean, the purpose for data, just for knowing what you guys want to do in the game. And yeah. You discover like, oh, nobody even goes and checks that out. You know, like, what are we spending time on that for? Everybody wants this. Mm. So that's the beauty. You know, we can get that real-time feedback from mobile so quickly and digest it and process it to make better games. One of the uh, other things that kind of happened in this moving us out of mobile, but it is a mobile platform being uh, the Switch. Um, Switch obviously was announced as being able to do pin effects as mm -hmm. a, a, a launch uh, platform. But then everybody kind of noticed, wait a second, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One were not mentioned and aren't those more powerful than the Switch. So I'm just wondering, can you elaborate on any of that? Because uh, it seems like a, that's a rather large base that obviously PS5s are very difficult to get <laughs> right now, and it seems like you'd be losing out on a lot of uh, uh, customers with that install base. Yeah, a couple of things. Yes, we're targeting next, or what, I mean, they're here now, next gen consoles. Yeah. Because our development base, we're pushing to the highest fidelity, and from there we we can scale down. That's just the way that we try to develop here. We're always pushing the limit first, and then we can port out to lower uh, supported platforms um, in terms of just what, what they're capable of. Uh, the reason why we didn't announce PS4 and Xbox One, um, it's simply a bandwidth issue right now. Uh, we're not able to day one launch Pinball FX across PS5 and PS4, Xbox Series X, and Xbox One. Um, so 
you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, do I want to see the game go there? I would. I just don't know when, and I, I couldn't fairly promise that day one. So um, it's really a bandwidth issue. Would that, though, also, because I know people are going to then wonder this, is, well, yeah, but if I do any purchasing eventually on a PS4, and then I buy the PS5, am I going to be back to, oh, I have to repurchase for that? Or is that something that you're going to have to save for later to be able to uh, communicate? Yeah, I, I really couldn't, I shouldn't open my mouth there. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> but look, I mean, you know, we, we can talk about backwards compatibility and we've done it forever. This is yeah. the first time we had to, we had to break. And honestly, it's a, it's a decision about technology when it comes down to it. Well, let's change the pace and have a think about some of the really popular um, features that were in FX3. And I think one of those is the create your own tournaments feature. Yes. Like it's, it's, it's like such a popular feature in FX3. Do you, do you see that returning to pinball effects? Um, and is it going to be different in pinball effects if you can talk to that? Yeah, that is one of the you know most loved features, one of the most used features. We know this. If that is very much staying, uh, hopefully we can enhance it. You know that is one of our baseline things. And you know as we go as platforms progress, it's all about taking the best things that are working and finding out how to make them better. That is a hot ticket yes item i imagine that you uh, i mean obviously you guys have uh, promoted various people's tournaments that um that, oh, that, that they've like the was it the the i won't say piang gang but i'm not quite sure um if i'm saying that right but anyway that uh uh you know they've wound up having to do their own software offsite in order to uh you know tally up totals to because they want to do long form uh multi table game you know tournaments that's one of those things that i'm wondering is that something that zen is looking at potentially adding is being able to create a larger tournament than just a single game tournament yeah there's a lot of formats we can slice and dice it a number of ways uh, we see how other people are doing it now we've got a lot of ideas on how we you know we can do it and, and innovate there um you know i can't spill too many beans but you know you i i think that we do a good job of enhancing our features in, in our platforms and making sure that there's an like new and innovate, like a whole new reason to build a platform and to begin with. So in other words, you've heard what the community is interested yeah, in and you're, we know what they want. Okay. Um, speaking of that, obviously leaderboards have been a, <laughs> they can be a point of contention among a lot of people. And I know that we here have been, this goes back to us with Farsight. We were like, wipe the boards every now and then. And part of that thing for us has been, and I know that it's been said before with Zen even, that if you guys were to do a code update that made the game more difficult, therefore making the top leaderboard score almost impossible to reach, that you're hesitant to do that. But we see obviously you know, Stern, JJP, they're constantly putting out code updates for their latest tables. And... Uh, if you were in an arcade, the odds of your high score on a pinball machine being wiped over the course of six months is very real. Um, is there any chance that maybe Zen goes into a, hey, every this period, the boards are going to be wiped. We'll you know, archive the top 50 scores. You can look it up by you know, the date and you know, be happy that way. Or are we going to continue same as same old and worry about whether any code updates that you guys do is going to be contingent on is it going to piss off the leaderboard people yeah it's a good point it's very thought-provoking um it, you know goes down you know to a maintenance sort of a thing and improving in these code updates uh, we've not focused on that you know really uh over the last couple of years but again adding more team members and having people available to do that sort of a thing uh, we'll make it, you know, we'll have to prioritize that and make decisions. But I definitely see your point. I agree with it. You know, with that, I think a lot of times we were fearful of doing things because we just don't feel like people get communication. Like they don't take the time to understand why something happened and then they just rage at you online and create a bunch of negativity. So, you know, there's also that problem is just making sure people understand why and what's going on. Right. Yeah, fair enough. Now, for console owners, there was a bit of good news, um, and that was the the console is getting a teen rating. So with a new rating, 
that could actually mean a change to what you can actually put into um, some of the the Belly Williams games, which did have some issues with content um, of an adult nature. So I'm wondering, is there a chance now with a team rating to think about ways of changing um, family mode content and enabling that for, for console owners moving forward? Yeah, definitely. Um, and yes, Pinball FX is going to be T-rated game. Um, and that is, you know, another kind of freedom, buys us more freedom with our, to do kind of true to nature content um, with what we've had before. We've been criticized about, you know, certain games, like uh, we just couldn't include that content. Probably Williams is the best example. And so we did the censored version. My preference is going to be to leave it uh, the, the default is going to be the family safe mode, and then you can change it to the, uh, to the, the, the full content. And that's a conscious decision of, of, of ours here at Zen, because we like to make games that we can just give our kids to play. And, yeah. um, you know, the, the world is changing, uh, quickly and what's politically correct is, or, you know, okay for a certain group or territory games are kind of at the forefront of this. I think we've talked about this maybe before, but, um, we're still very sensitive to that. And the last thing we want to do is, you know, in most of the time you don't realize you're doing it. it you have to be so aware of everything uh, you're, you're putting out in the world. So yeah, um, we'll be able to put, put, put games out that have been censored previously in the Williams side. And then as we're bringing in new licenses or there's more content coming, we could push the boundaries a bit on the, on the T side, you know, that T rating gives us extra, uh, descriptors <laughs> that we can, you know, simulate and, and have in having the game. Yeah, that's fair enough. The, especially because, you know, obviously immediately pops up. You're like, ah, so we can get uh, Jackbot back in and we can maybe get an Elvira table in the future because I was just imagining a censored Elvira would just be plain wrong. <laughs> it wouldn't be it's Elvira not an anymore. table at no. all. No, it um, <laughs> really isn't. <laughs> um, that was that was literally what got me to buy Pro Mode one when Farsight was doing it with Pinball Arcade because I was like, I can't stand this version of the audio that is nothing like what I remember this machine being. Um, but mm. like you said, it's fair enough for to ship it with Family Mode and make it that you have to make the conscious effort to turn it on or turn it off. Um, that is at least. It, it's a token step, but it's there all the same that you easily point to. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can definitively put an end to this. And that is, we have a host of tables that uh, throughout the years have dropped off and never returned. Um, whether that be, and I myself, since I wasn't an Xbox owner, I never played Buccaneers or Speed Machine or Agents or those really early, you know, the Rocky and Bullwinkle. I don't even know what those look like because um, I was on PlayStation. Mm. But then, you know, more recently, obviously we lost five tables going from FX2 to FX3. This go round, we're losing um, uh, Walking Dead, which understandable since Telltale, good luck getting hold of them since they kind of don't exist and... I imagine Valve wasn't too happy with you guys um, for the portal purposes. <laughs> Didn't even ask them. <laughs> you know, um, so is there a chance, is there even any desire on the part of Zen to go back, bring these up, maybe re when I say remaster, rethink them? Uh, you know, obviously you guys have learned a lot about design of machine of tables since those early days. Um, or do we just need to put a nail on it and say, nope, they're done. We're not seeing those again. I would say the, the first group of tables that you mentioned. Uh, the early like the Xbox ones, yeah. Yeah, those really early ones. And then like Rocky and Bullwinkle, um, you know, there's a the nail in the coffin on those. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think those are coming back. Um, some of the, the licensed ones, I would love to bring them back. We're working on bringing them back. Um, those are still great designs. Uh, do I want South Park back on in pinball effects <laughs> of course i do mm. <laughs> and plans for zombies even even street fighter street fighter's great you know and ninja gaiden um well we said we'll, street we'll fighter see. because i imagined that one up would love to be able to put up a street fighter pinball cabinet <laughs> well you know yeah john d and i have a lot of history there mm -hmm. uh, street mm -hmm. fighter, that was your first license with him right it was yeah. yes he got the better of us on that one. <laughs> First license is always the hardest. You gotta, you're, you're just gonna get it. So, um, yeah, there, there is hope. I don't want to like 
I've been really bad in the past about being really excited about stuff and hinting too much at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just will say that we know you want these. We want them. Uh, it is possible. Okay. That means we're just going to keep on pestering until we find out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Let's move into this. Is the uh, we, we kind of save this for a little while into this, folks, because we didn't want to. Uh, uh, we want people to actually listen and not just <laughs> turn off their ears. So, Mel, what table did you want to announce today? Oh, wait. Um, <laughs> 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 I was going to try and fool it. No, uh, obviously the response with regards to both table purchases not going forward into Pinfall FX and on P the PC side going Epic exclusive. We had, I mean, I guess we were naive to this. We had no idea. There are some very strong opinions about the Epic Game Store. Um, mm. We understand the business angle of why, if you're doing complete remasters, the man hours that goes into it, you can't just give that away for free. Um, you know why that is, but obviously the reaction you saw it, we we felt it. I put a little bit of unfortunately mm. on Jeff it <laughs> this week in pinball in an article I wrote. Um, how did you guys? Did you know? Did you expect this kind of reaction? How do you, do you how do you address it? Yeah, um, this is what we expected. Um, you know, I don't want to minimalize it but it no. wasn't as bad as what i thought it was going to be to be honest with you we have a right. lot of support and a lot of people who don't like to chatter online and become a part of a toxic community or just throw their hat in message me privately or through other means and you know they under they, they say hey we get it um you know it's not my favorite thing but we still support you and thank you for being honest about it so mm -hmm. um i thought that we would actually have more negativity i thought it would be Terrible, to be honest with you. I was dreading it. Um, we all were dreading it. You do things as a company because you've got people that depend on you to make decisions. And sometimes we just evaluate it and we just say, this is the right thing to do for our company for the next 10 whatever years. You know, this decision was made pre-acquisition. Um, this decision was made because we were a different type of company. And would we make it again? I mean, I, I don't know. I can't second guess it. But the reaction that we got, you know, and I know that people just like, I don't understand. I personally don't understand it. Um, you can play a game wherever you want. Um, on PC, you know, I, I, there's myths about Epic being Chinese uh, spyware or whatever. But like those guys, you know, <laughs> they, they give away a lot of games. They, they have awesome uh, storefront. I mean, there's no reason why we can't launch a game there. They support us unbelievably well. Um, this was a decision, a conscious decision, and the way that we wanted to tell everybody was a very conscious decision. And uh, we knew it would be difficult. We knew that it would be challenging. We tried to do it in a way that was honest, upfront, providing ample time to digest it. So hopefully over time, you guys, you know, the community will understand and maybe look back on it. And hopefully the people who aren't with us right now or say that, that we're the most evil company in the world will maybe come around and we can win you back. Because I'm assuming that you guys kind of tested the waters with the Epic Game Store, with Operantia and Dreadnoughtical and uh, Castle Storm too. Yeah, yeah, we uh, we've we've launched all three of those there, uh, you know, exclusively, and um, you know we've we've been close with Epic, like we've had friends there for many many years. Um, we we actually worked in Unreal Technology way back when we did a Punisher first person arena based shooter back in like 2009 or 10, you know, that was on an unreal tech and we've maintained the relationship. Know about that one. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, that's not us. archives of Zen history. Um, of course, what am I pinging? Punisher pinball. Um, yeah. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, um, another thing I wanted to kind of clarify because I, I know that I wound up seeing it in a forum, but I wanted to get it out there verbally coming out. We were, kind of theorizing, okay, wait a second, with the one-year exclusivity within Epic, does that mean also any table that's released within that time period, you know, from the point it releases, does it now have a one-year DLC exclusivity on there? Or is it the case where after that one year expires that any table that had been put out during that time would also uh, be available at that point too? That's correct. It's the latter of what you just said. Okay. Once the game is released, that begins our period. Everyone's fully aware that we are constantly launching tables into uh, pinball, said pinball platform. And at the end of that term, um, all content in said pinball platform can can go wide. With the uh, 
console platforms, is there going because I know that some games uh, require this, is it going to be an epic login on the consoles or is that a completely separate beast? No, 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 that, that's completely separate. Okay. That, there, there's not an epic login for anything on Pinball FX. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I kind of was wondering about, and we were kind of thinking, you know, in terms of goodwill, uh, hopefully the answer is yes, but um, with uh, the Williams tables that are out right now, uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, Volumes 1 through 3 had the different physics than what then got implemented in Volume 4. Those physics have made their way into the Arcade 1-Up cab, so we know that it's been done within the PX engine. Uh, are those going to get sunsetted in, in a patch for FX3 with the Williams tables? Yeah, we want to take care of those tables. We want to get them the Williams physics. Can't give you a date when it's happening. But that will happen. It will happen. Okay. Yep. So on timelines and impatient um, <laughs> gamers. So, you know, we know that Pin Pinball FX is coming out sometime at the end of the year. No real release date yet. But, you know, that's a long time to wait for new content. Is there going to be stuff coming out between Star Wars Pinball VR and pinball effects coming out later in the year that people can enjoy from Zen from the pinball space. Yeah, there will be. Um, awesome. We, like I, I said, you know, I think, I don't know. It must've been the first episode of the pinball show. We got some, <laughs> we got a lot of stuff coming. There's going to be some surprises uh, coming um, that I think everyone will just be like, where did this come from? Uh, we're just going to drop it on you. So mm -hmm. there will be more to hold you all over uh, between now and, and when Pinball FX launches. And that's I think why you tune into the Pinball Show, because I'm sure that's where it'll get announced. <laughs> mm. <laughs> There'll be news. Stay, stay tuned. Um, there's one other uh, thing on there. Now, we did talk earlier in the show about, you know, the sort of cadence and you know, how many tables you'd like to get out um, once, you know, you get spun up with the uh, new staff and that sort of thing. But from the perspective of of pinball effects how many titles new titles given that there is going to be stuff coming out this year now and you've revealed that how many new titles do you think we're going to see maybe before the end of 2021 before the end of the year okay so before the end of the year so we already announced classic collectibles and mandalorian yep. right mm -hmm. that's yep. two so I'm going to count on my fingers here. I can't say that the names, otherwise I'm no, screwed. Right. You'll, 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 you'll be in trouble. trouble over again. You, you, you said some originals <laughs> were going to be on the way. Okay. So this year there should be nine news and tables coming. Nine. That's a lot. And that, is that a combination of originals and licensed? Oh, yeah, like when I say 11. licensed, like William, 11. That's a combination of, of Zen originals and like Williams tables. It, that's right. Um, Yes, 11. 11. Between, sometime between now and the end of 2021, which the prior year, I think, what was the most that you guys had put out? Uh, it was like th three? Six, no, like 16 tables total, but it was like four different packs or something like that. Mm. That's, I mean, considering nothing has been released so far, that's pretty good clip for what's going to be. Yeah, eleven. Eleven's <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Well, here's the thing: right when we were in, aside from the from WMS six, we had a pretty good clip yes. on Williams games, and, and they're not full. You know, we're not starting from ground zero. Mm -hmm. I'm talking this year, guys. There's going to be eleven from ground zero games shipped. Oh, right. Brand new Zen exclusive, like original licenses. Yeah. Well, and you've got Star Wars Pinball VR coming. You've got Pinball FX coming. And there's going to be 11 brand new from the ground up Zen tables coming. Okay. Okay. That's definitely something Good to look news. forward to. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the things that you talked about was, uh, obviously, people have a whole bunch of features that they want put into Pinball FX. But there's that feature creep where, yeah, if you just keep on putting them in, it's just going to keep on pushing it back. Uh, but for people like me that run cabinet mode, one of those things that we are very curious about, and it's always bugged me to the point that then I had to go make my own back glass. Um, <laughs> but what got revealed with the Williams collection with the flick of a button, hey, look, there was the back glass, and it was animated. Can we expect Zen to do 
back glasses that are mm. built in for cabinet mode that maybe are even animated back glasses because obviously the Williams ones, uh, certain tables, like if you were to do a lot of the System 11s, have a lot of windows on the back glass that are important information. Yeah. yeah. It's a very obvious feature that we're missing right now. <laughs> I, would, <laughs> I would agree. Um, and yeah, that is that makes a ton of sense to include that. Uh, we're, so when we look at, well, okay, here's cab support as it stands. What is the next thing to do? That is the next thing to do. So um, right. that, will, that will be there. I think we have actually a really, really great solution, um, which I think will be ultimately enhancing uh, that what we can do there. It won't just be like, a graphic, I think we're going to have something. Really well, I was going to say, I imagine your licensors would probably be thrilled too to have a little, you know, rather than people pulling random images from the internet to create their own backlash, to have an official backlash that your licensors are like, yes, that sells it for us. See, you have to understand this, this, this DIY effort now has been going on a lot longer than licensors have been open to the idea of what this is. It's taken a while for them to understand mm -hmm. it. It's not yeah. for them to understand, oh, we can make money. Oh, this is a very, like, how does this work for us? So like, while we all have been here knowing that cab support is like a duh thing for pinball, like, of course you do that. It takes, you know, with, with biz, big business, it just takes time for them to digest it and to know and to accept new kind of products to support it. So there's always a lead time there. Um, a DOI community is always ahead of the curve in terms of how you can make that into a true business. Uh, speaking of cabs, then let's shift over into what you can talk about with one up. I know it's always like, <laughs> stepping into somebody else's party and talking about it because mm -hmm. we should be talking to them about it and hopefully we'll be getting David on back. Um, I'm waiting to find out when that'll be, but uh, in which case mm -hmm. we can have some of these. But speak to what you're able to, but with regards to the response that was with the three cabs that you have guys have announced. Obviously, pre-orders have been like you know the golden ticket and they're mm. not even in stores yet. How has the response uh, surprised you guys? Uh, it's been overwhelming. It, I'm probably the most optimistic pinball guy on the planet, or at least here at Zen, uh, for thinking what the potential is for this game on a global basis and with virtual pinball cabinets. It exceeded even my expectation, <laughs> just to <laughs> put it mildly. We can, I mean, it's a, it's a good problem to have, but I don't like seeing people trying to get units on eBay for $2,000. Right. You know? I mm -hmm. want, I want everybody who wants one of these to have one. That's, that was the reason why we did it was because I know everybody wants a pinball machine. It just needs to be sized right and priced right. And that was the goal. And we need to address this. Um, and arcade one up is addressing it, but we need to get more units in the market. Does it, mm -hmm. uh, does it affect the choices that you guys make going forward for uh, what you would potentially want to see in newer or, or I should say newer uh, more arcade one-up cabs not the three that you guys have made but building more cabs for the future or even just the idea of like you said there was the idea of okay can we add games to it all that because obviously yeah. just within this past year between the the three-quarter scale market all of a sudden there was four products everybody doing a different thing I'm sure that you guys have been aware of what people's comments have been regarding what they like, what they don't like, what they wish to have. Has, has that altered kind of the, the plans yeah. going forward? Yeah, I'll be honest. Like I kind of was looking at the launch of Arcade One Up as a proof of concept, mm -hmm. you know? Let's find mm -hmm. out if the market really does want these. Let's find out if we can move them at retail. Let's find out what uh, people want to do with the machine. And a lot of our assumptions were confirmed in a lot of cases with the demand was just, like I said, out, out, you know, totally beyond what we thought. Um, and so, you know, what I, what I don't want to ever have the perception be is like that we just want to sell somebody who bought, who took a chance on the gen one unit, just be forced to buy another one to have the best stuff. So, you know, um, I want to make sure that if you've invested in a unit and we do updates and there's new content, like you should be able to get that. Of course, these wave one units, you can, you know, with a, with a dongle, you can, you can try to take it online. Plenty of people are showing you how to mod it or, or you know, take it, go online. That's okay. Is it optimal? No, it's not the best user experience. It should just work out of the box to go mm -hmm. online to do stuff. But this is a platform we have to take seriously. Um, it's another, again, I said, I don't like building platforms, but 
Here we go. We've got, <laughs> another, we we've another, got another segment now to our portfolio. We've got PC, console, mobile, VR, and now virtual pinball cabinets, which we absolutely have to take seriously and support long term. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, this is a chunk of money that people fork out, and I want to make sure that they're happy with it. So uh, our job is software. And our job is, you know, to make sure it's the best experience. Arcade One Up's job is hardware and making sure it's, it's available. Um, and we need to work together to, to make sure this, this is awesome for players. I guess that probably leads into a, a question that I had, which, based on that answer, you may not be able to address. But it, what is actually happening uh, between Zen and Arcade One Up to address the supply issues um, and try and get these units into people's hands? Yeah, well, what we're experiencing partially as well is uh, some global issues that we have no control over. There's mm -hmm. a chip shortage right now. There's a glass shortage as well. Um, right. And these are things that I don't know. I sit over here in software land, so I'm like, I don't understand stuff like that. But then, you know, you, you see this report, and they're like, well, we, we only have this much glass and we can only get these many chips. And, and this space is exploding, actually. And, and it's, you know, you look at just monitors and television screens and all the all the different things that require you know glass and the sort of these raw materials it's a global demand so arcade one up is competing with everybody for the, for these sort of materials um we're trying to get creative you know um i would love to see manufacturing potentially done in multiple locations around the world and that way we can have better distribution globally um mm. these are things that i suggest of course i don't know any, <laughs> yeah it's kind of out know. of your hands <laughs> Like you said, uh, have to get John Dion. Not the hardware. Yeah. Need to get John D on, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. They, went up, they, they know. They, <laughs> they work hard to, to try to fix this. I mean, their business is about physical product. So mm -hmm. they've got that end sewn up. They, they would be doing all they could yeah. to actually try and alleviate supply issues, obviously. But, you know, with the, um, with, I guess stay tuned. With regards to software, though, maybe you can address some of the things that uh, I know that some of the things that I've been reading, because I don't have one of these cabs yet. Uh, but people have been saying that they wish that the accelerometer they were able to uh, uh, set, basically, uh, or recalibrate. Um, I know that in terms of the display, that they wish that they were able to be able to, uh, you know, change the brightness on it. You know, make maybe make it less washed out if they were experiencing that. And I know that that would be built in to the software that you guys are doing. Um, but then I'm even hearing things like that apparently Whitewater, uh, for some people, it is a stuttery experience. Mm -hmm. um, is that things that then you're able to look at and say, hey, we want to do a, a firmware patch and be able to put in? Yeah, th that's exactly what would happen. Firmware patch, you know, we can make that available for download, throw it on a drive, put it in, uh, update the game. So... Yeah, you know, that was one of the things we knew. And, and again, you know, we go through a rigorous QA testing process and, and we, knowing that we're shipping without like, you know, built in Wi-Fi connectivity and that we would require people to go through a very manual process to update um, was, again, a decision. We, we just didn't feel good about having an online presence when it just was, would have been we were just weren't ready. We couldn't build it and yeah. we, we just didn't know. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we need to we need to do an update. Um, there's some, you know. We hear the request for these updated features. Uh, so it's like everything, like this, this, this list of red things that we want to fix. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of imagine, because I know that obviously some of the things that Arcade 1UP has done with their past arcade machines, um, I mean, just even things like with their volume control, you know, it used mm -hmm. to be just high and low volume, and then they wound up doing that little switch to just make it, you know, be a progressive bar. Um, but that was obviously then when they did other generations but some of these things i was like well it's not a hardware thing it's purely a software that you guys could go ahead and do if it was something that you felt needing addressed so there's the question though is it that arcade one up has to say hey we need this addressed or is it something that you can go to arcade one up and be like hey we would like to address this well that's a good question i mean Usually when we hear about the issues, it's addressed to both of us, right? And then yeah. I, I'm informed of it. So it's not really like <laughs> we need to go to them or they need to go to us. It's just, yeah, we need to get together, make a concerted effort, make sure we wrap everything into one patch because I don't want to do, have to do multiples. Mm. Um, and decide what the delivery mechanism will be, make sure it's well communicated, make sure it's not messing up other stuff. Like we need to go through a rigorous test again. You go through an entirely new QA process because like you release a firmware update and you screw oh. something else up. And then... Right. 
Mm -hmm. Oh, now the game doesn't boot up at all. You know what I mean? So like, gotcha. And then you have okay. to scramble to fix that problem. It's like whack-a-mole. It's software. Anybody who knows it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Jared, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, has there been, since these things are exploding, uh, have you had licensors now come to you and be like, we want part of this. We want our own cabinet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, they don't even necessarily, they're like, can we just get a cabinet even if, if our game's not ready? You know, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> can, we just put artwork? can we just have it in the office? Can we just have it in our house? Uh, that's the cool thing. I mean, that's why we all love this hobby in this game, right? I mean, like, it, it, it's like, one of, that's one of the fun things. Um, so, yeah, it's bringing people that we haven't even made games for yet. <laughs> <laughs> they just want a machine. So. It's like, they shut up and take my money. They're throwing the money at the screen right, at you. Right. They just want it. Yeah. It's not a bad problem to have. Hey, um, so we all know that Zen is all about um, like using past experiences to influence future decisions. And I'm sure that you've got a lot of um, uh, lessons learned from the whole process of releasing cabinets. If you could change one thing, and I know it's probably hard because there's probably a lot of things you would change. If you could only change one thing with the way that you've produced this first range of cabinets, what do you think that would be? It's a good question because I think the product is good. I think the services, mm -hmm. we should have built in a, a service element. And maybe, you know, because I, I'm not going to pat myself on the back, but maybe I will just a little bit here because I've been believing in this for many years, you know, um, it was a hard sell internally just to turn on vertical monitor support and, and right. that spawned a whole overnight movement from people building things. Um, I believed in VP cabs with Brad over there in uh, Ohio and worked with him to get him onto a uh, shark tank mm -hmm. and he got a deal done. And, mm -hmm. and I was like, okay, like we got something. I've been hard selling this along internally for many, many years. And I knew that we would see this result, but I didn't push hard enough to, uh, to, to push for the service element. So I think, you know, yes, we got the product. Yes, we see the demand, but I do think that being able to service the machine is something I would have changed. Mm. I'm guessing that uh, you hear a lot of people asking, oh, wave two, I'm gonna wait for wave two. Uh, the fact that these things are still having a hard time even getting into a retail spot, I imagine uh, that's gonna carry us through the end of the year just with these three that we have. Um, but Obviously, Arcade 1UP is known for incrementally improving their cabinets down the line. Uh, what do you see as goals that you would want implemented in a cabinet uh, of the future? I want an online store. Okay. I want people to be able to easily get more content. If you know Somebody who invests in a $500 brand new Xbox, they want to play a bunch of games on it. Mm. Someone who's buying a $600 pinball machine, I, I, I think that they want to play a bunch of games on it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think they want to play in tournaments. I think they want to be connected to friends. They want a pinball effect style, uh, you know, experience. So, you know, that's what I would like to see uh, in terms of software support and the user experience. In terms of hardware, um, I think that there's a place in the market for a more robust unit, you know, high, you know, like a RK went up premium or something like that. Mm -hmm. I also yeah. think there's a huge part of the market that still can't afford the $600 price point or they don't have the space and they want maybe something that's more on their, on their desktop. I want to fill the gaps, man. Like I want everybody to play our game because I think it's fun <laughs> and I want to give it to yeah. them in a format that they can experience it in a way that they might not have done before that. I mean, that's really what I want to accomplish. So uh, that's what I think in the future we could, we could see happen. All right. Well, we've dominated your time plenty here. Uh, hopefully we cleared up some of the follow-up questions. <laughs> I think me and Jared exhausted every question that we can think of for the most part. Um, mm. So again, Mel, hey, we really appreciate you coming on. Um, happy whenever you're able to, to do it. We're definitely uh, obviously going to be paying attention to whatever happens within the, uh, the, the pinball show because that's just, you know, fuel for the fire for us because we already have something that we're speculating about that planning for our next show that we're like well we yeah. can't ask mel because he's not going to tell us that but we can speculate about it <laughs> um, so we we appreciate you uh playing along with us and uh answering what you're willing to obviously as honestly you're able to 
It's always a pleasure, guys. Um, you know, I, I always tell you, thank you for the way you uh, you do things and the way you cover this the segment of, of the industry and, you know, pinball in general. I think you do a really good good job. So Here, let, let's just clear something else up uh, because we've been accused of this. No, folks, we are not in any way paid by Zen. Correct, Mel? <laughs> Very correct. There you yeah. go. <laughs> it's just opinions. We happen to like the game. Sue yeah. us. Um, Sorry about that. <laughs> darn. <laughs> I do get. I, I get asked to go talk on other things and, and do shows. I, you see, I've done a few others. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, yeah. but honestly, I mean, my, my time. I just, I just don't have time. I'd love to talk more. I just, if I'm going to go and, and talk somewhere, I like to do it where I think um, it's time well spent. So I hope that's the the deepest level of respect I can I can show to you. We'll accept it. We appreciate 100%, it. One hundred percent. Absolutely. All right, Mel. Uh, we're out of here. We've run up the time. Thank you so much again. Um, Jared, what are we going to talk about next time? As always, stuff and things. Until next time, folks. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>